Tonight's top European Union stories from the Unit UK include Ukraine to sign political aspects of EU pact on Friday and European Union mobile devices will be forced to use a common charger. The EU suspends talks on visa-free travel with Russia and threatens further sanctions. And UK has EU issues after yes vote. Plus, establishing a financing instrument for development cooperation. What so many people don't realise is that almost nothing goes untouched by the European Union. The media has and is complicit in this whitewash, which goes back to the original Foreign and Commonwealth Office document 301048, which clearly states that the EU regulations and directives should be hidden from the public. So it's no surprise that key news this morning is the UK government's announcement that a new 12-sided £1 coin is to be introduced. Of course, viewers and readers of our channel know that even this simple measure hasn't been brought about by busy ministers and civil servants funded with our tax pounds. As you know from last night's nightly news, this new coin and its design requirements are mandated by the European Union. It's Wednesday, the 19th of March. I'm Rick Timmis, and this is the Unit Nightly News. First up, the hot story from our website, theunituk.com. Ukraine to sign political aspects of EU pact on Friday. Well, well, I have to say our team here were shocked, nigh stunned in amazement when this article came across our desk. After reporting on the tug of war between the EU and Russia for the economically and strategically important Ukraine, resulting in a deliberate coup, which we believe was orchestrated and indeed leaked calls between Newland and Pyatt suggest actually organised by the West, how interesting that an EU-Ukraine deal is now back on the table. You can't sell our search team on your propaganda. We see who's pulling the strings. Ukraine will sign an agreement on closer political cooperation with the European Union on Friday leaving the signature of a more far-reaching trade accord for later, the EU said on Monday. Now, EU foreign ministers said in a statement after meeting in Brussels that they looked forward to the signing of the political provisions of the so-called association agreement that Ukraine had negotiated with the 28-nation EU on March 21st. The agreement is expected to be signed on the sidelines of an EU summit being held in Brussels that day. EU mobile devices will be forced to use a common charger. European Union politicians have vowed to end the nightmare of non-compatible phone chargers. The European Parliament on Thursday gave its approval to introduce new common charger rules for mobile phones and other portable devices such as tablets, digital cameras and music players. The current incompatibility of chargers is a nightmare and a real inconvenience for consumers. This new directive ends this nightmare and is also good news for the environment as it will result in a reduction of electronic waste, said European Parliament negotiator Barbara Vila. The EU suspends talks on visa-free travel with Russia and threatens further sanctions. The European Union has suspended talks on investment and visa-free travel with Russia in response to the crisis in Ukraine. After six hours of talks in Brussels on Thursday, European leaders warned they would consider further sanctions if Moscow refused to negotiate over a withdrawal from Crimea. French President François Hollande spelt out what would happen if Russia takes measures that destabilise Ukraine. To put it more simply, that jeopardise the Ukrainian sovereignty, then we will take further action. Those further actions could include freezing Russian assets, a travel ban for senior officials and withdrawing from a G8 summit in Sochi in June. Now, hang on, François et al. Let's just establish who destabilised the Ukraine. 
Victoria Newland, on record, put up $5 billion to instigate a change of government in Ukraine. Check our website for all the provocation and economic chicanery that the EU got up to before the terrible EU-Ukraine accession deal went south. And we all know that that strong arm deal was put together as a deliberate economic hitman strategy. Russia has a treaty in place with Crimea to station 28,000 troops there, and this treaty has been in place longer than the United States has even existed. Crimea has a referendum which is illegitimate, and yet the Falklands referendum stands valid. Pardonnez-moi, monsieur, but you're speaking with forked tongue. Now how about a little honesty? The US is an economic basket case, and so is the EU. Fuel stroke energy drives the economies of both. And you bunch of maniac kleptocrats know that if you can't secure energy supplies at stabilised prices, you're all going to hell in a handbasket. And so to avoid your inevitable collapse into economic insolvency, you are provoking Russia, trying to isolate it, all in an effort to cover up your own hypocrisy and deception. UK has EU issues after a yes vote. The UK potentially faces the same issues in a vote on membership of the European Union as Scotland faces in its referendum, a leading economist has said in Edinburgh. In either case, a rejection of the status quo would mean the pragmatic renegotiation of relationships between institutions, Gerard Lyons told the final day of the National Association of Pension Funds Investment Conference. Mr Lyons, 25 years in the city and now economic advisor to the London Mayor Boris Johnson, said The relationship between the UK and the rest of Europe is as significant an issue as that between Scotland and the rest of the UK. But while power was already devolving to Edinburgh, it was centralising on Brussels. Now that last line is the truth behind this story. The power is centralising to Brussels. This idea that England is inextricably locked into the EU is part of the overall strategy by our Euro segment of the globalist agenda. But my friends, it's kidology. And Trevor Coleman, MEP, predicted this political strategy early on in our foundations here at the unit. Well, Mr. Lyons is talking rubbish. Extraction from Europe is simple. In fact, it's far simpler than and cheaper than maintaining the federal subservience. Go to the films area of our website. You'll find it in the video section and take a look at Time to Say No to see exactly what we're talking about. Establishing a financing instrument for development cooperation. Following through on our focus on the African continent, I pulled this from our legislation section. In essence, it legislates a pan-African finance and support program. Here are the key points to take away. Geographic programs which aim at developing cooperation with certain developing countries. Thematic programs to address development-related global public goods and challenges and a pan-African program to support the strategic partnerships between the European Union and Africa. Now, the overriding principal objective with this legislation is the eradication of poverty, as well as fostering sustainable economic, social and environmental development. But in this final sentence of this paragraph, we see the foundations of the African Union being laid down, just as we did in the Foreign and Commonwealth Office document 301048 back in 1970. The legislation says, consolidating and supporting democracy, the rule of law, good governance and human rights. Now remember to visit our website, theunituk.com, for all the very latest news. You can find our page on Facebook by searching for The Unit UK, all one word. Join our community on Google+, Plus, where you can interact with us, voice your opinions and post comments about our stories, and even get involved in the shows. And for all the latest tweets as they happen, then follow us on Twitter, at The E Unit. I'm Rick Timmis, reporting for The Unit Nightly News. I'll see you soon.